So, filtering incoming stimuli. And again, traders, it's my choice. Okay, I didn't pull up eSignal today and these goofy blue lines magically appeared. I put them there. I define that that's an 833 stochastic. I chose a 34 period RSI with the midpoint set to 50. I then assigned value to what each one of those means and more importantly what action is going to be taken as a result of what I see. They didn't magically pop up there. I can just as easily remove them from that chart if they are a distraction. And I will tell you again, truth. If you don't know the model verbatim and have yourself to a point of unconscious competence with that model, they are a distraction. And I say it simply in some Kansas verbiage, if it ain't helping you, it is hurting you. If it's not necessary to do the job, get it off the chart and it doesn't just mean the information coming visually from the chart it means any other junk that's external and again you gotta do whatever works for you if it's more powerful for you to hear junk get it out of there get upset about it whatever works for you but if it's not moving you towards consistency it's distracting then when you get really good you can look at a chart and again, back to my days as a, a receiver in football. Coach would hold the ball out. He would wave it left to right. I was supposed to react. And then as soon as he spoke out externally, right, I would move to that direction. He'd throw the ball. I would do the pick. Have to yell the same thing every single time. It's all about repetition. It taught me to respond physiologically. My body moved based on what my eyes saw. And when we first started the drill, we had fantastic athletes tripping all over themselves. Two weeks later, we looked like pros. So here, I choose to trail my stop because that's what the trading plan says. Here, bam, good decision. I left enough room for that common cyclical retracement or common, common market harmonic or volatility or retracement, retrenchment, whatever you call it. And the market went up and attained what was my profit target. So right there, made a decision. And the result of that decision was sufficient to leave me in the position and bam I got rewarded now right now at this time I feel good about the decision I just made and now I might start to see hey that might be a glimmer of hope oh sure it was a little tough you know I was one winner and two losers before and down money but man I just did what I was supposed to do I got paid for that now I'm back up to break even down a little bit up a little bit whatever it might be now if I trade my account versus trade the market then I look over at that little blotter and instead of watching my charts to make decisions about entries, stops and targets I now look at that P&L and I let that P&L weigh on me with every click up and down and up and down I choose to jump on this emotional roller coaster I choose to attach pain to every time it goes negative and pleasure to every time it goes positive and then if it stays negative more than it's positive, I might choose to exit the trade. Well, wait a minute. That's not what the signal said. Yeah, but man, I don't feel so good about that when it goes negative. Well, then stop watching it. I don't know who it was, but a comedian says, you know, it only hurts when I breathe. He said, well, stop breathing. Quit doing that. Okay, so again, it's about the reticular formation it's about training ourselves to walk through that. It's, your brain is accustomed to it. Our brains are accustomed to gathering stimulus, then taking that stimulus and discovering what does it mean, what do I do? And it always occurs in conditional processes. So as you go through your daily life this week, sit down and just think about it. Think about every interaction you have with every human being. If they extend their hand, then I extend my hand. Okay. If they hold my hand too tight when they're shaking my hand or hang on a little longer, then I may feel uncomfortable. If they extend their hand and I don't extend my hand to shake their hand when I meet somebody, then I might be perceived as rude. Think about expectations. When were you taught that a red octagon with 
four big white letters on it meant that you should take your foot off the accelerator and put it on the brake. You didn't know that coming out of the womb. You didn't know that at four years old. We were taught the theory, the logic. There are consequences to not following those rules. We cause an accident or in an accident get a ticket. Because there's pain attached to that and those consequences, then we choose to follow the rules. At least when nobody else is looking, possibly, you know. It's the same thing. So do what your brain does naturally. Do what's already comfortable. Do what we've already been trained to do in every other area of our life. Make it a natural, easy process. We're already accustomed to doing that. And then follow it through. Okay? So right here, we're seeing a time where the market now is starting to contract. We've had a monster move. And again, we could go through 47 different types of analysis on what the market should do. Or we could just say, well, I've already taken my first, my second, my third strike. They've all paid the profit target. Right now, the system is flat. I don't look back and have any remorse about not taking that fourth strike by that would have been an easy additional 35 pips. I choose not to do that. I don't look at this and try to identify, well, you know, I'm going to go ahead and sell a break below that. This thing's probably going to turn anyway. I choose not to do that. I look at the market and I'm prepared and I say, if the blue line, E line, crosses below the green line, the T line, then I've got black candles, it's a sell. I might go over and look at my position sizing. Make sure the default number of contracts in your dome or whatever execution is set properly. Just scroll up and down in your dome, cancel all, make sure there are no working orders, and that's it. And other than that, you wait until the market gives you instructions about what to do next. It's easier to surround ourselves with distractions to take away the responsibility of following our trading plan. Surrounding ourselves as traders with tools does not make us better traders, it makes us bigger targets with smaller accounts. When we teach our kids to drive, we start by eliminating any distractions, the radio, the cell phone, CDs hanging from a mirror. But as traders, we're continually compelled to do the exact opposite. The more useless information we provide our minds with, the longer we look for reasons to not follow our plan and make good decisions. Repetition is the key component and filter to deciding what information is valuable and necessary versus what information we're consulting to talk ourselves out of our plan. Our profit and loss can be the biggest distraction of all. Focusing on money coming in and out of our account is the equivalent of weighing ourselves every 20 minutes on a diet. The greatest traders in the world achieve a level of boredom. Each choice in trade is just another choice in trade one of thousands that will be taken over the course of a lifetime.